overflows. Significance of solar plexus in transformation. This center does not depend on your eating. It is connected to the cosmic inexhaustible source of energy where energy flows constantly. Shiva calls this energy free or energy filling center. It is energy free because it does not receive energy through the food that you eat. Also, it is connected to the cosmic source of energy. Biologically speaking, it is also known as emotional center. It remains tense because of many suppressed emotions that each one of us carry within knowingly or unknowingly. Biologically, it is connected to the solar plexus, the kidneys, the pancreas, the lungs, the stomach, the nervous system and the prostrate gland. Energetically speaking, this center governs our feelings, sensitivities and emotions. And of course, the stomach and nervous system and kidneys which produce adrenaline. Adrenaline would be connected to a center that governs our feelings. Have you ever thrown up or started hyperventilating before a big presentation? Being so much upset or emmed up or filled with so much energy that you could not eat or being so depressed that you ate the entire pizza or a large plate of food. I feel we all have been at one point or another in this situation. In fact, there have been studies that show that same area in our brain that are stimulated when we feel physical pain are activated when we feel emotional pain. The way the ways emotional and physical trauma are proceed, proceeded by the body are interconnected with one another. The way emotional and physical trauma are processed by the body are interconnected with one another. Consequently, the emotional center or solar plexus is also the center of addiction, whether it be food, sex, drugs or alcohol. Manipur, as it is known as, or solar plexus center, performs double duty as one of the three awareness centers alongside the mind or Anjana Chakra, the third eye center and spleen center. And one of our four motor centers along with root center the sacral center and the heart center. So these centers go like Anjana Chakra and Spleen Center. Then the other is the root chakra, the earth center, the sacral center, center and heart center. Furthermore, it is the most intense center or chakra in our system. There is this constant tug of war happening here between awareness and actions. Two things are there. On one hand there is awareness, the other hand is actions. Actions are guided by emotions. So there remains a tug of war 
and we ride the waves of our emotions which guide our actions. This we see on a day-to-day -day basis. Sometimes the awareness does not allow us to do the certain things, but it is the emotion, emotional way that guides our actions, irrespective of our own awareness. Sometimes even not willing to do, we end up doing under the waves of emotions. And our emotional energy fluctuates and ebbs and flow like waves in the ocean through this center. This is where we experience emotional polarities, euphoria and depression, passion and pain. So it goes like this, emotional polarities, euphoria and depression, passion and pain, guilt and forgiveness. These are polarities. On one hand, there is euphoria and the other hand, the other side is depression. One side is passion, the other side is pain. One side is guilt, the other side is forgiveness. So we remain swinging between these polarities. Through this center, we learn how to process our feelings and experience with the goal being clarity. And because this center is also motor, this is the center of desire where we are pushed towards experience, experiences that keep us in the highest of high, while simultaneously trying to avoid the lows. So it remains a situation of experiencing. This center also is where we work on forgiveness and releasing painful destructive emotions or emotional patterns where we are really truly living in alignment with energy of this center we really feel our interconnectedness with all of humanity once this center is activated and working in order you feel a deep interconnection with the entire humanity without any conflict. The moment you will feel this center through breath movement, the process of transformation will begin. The moment you feel this center through breath movement, the process of transformation will begin. The moment your breath arises from this center and dissolves there as well, like a wave arising and falling, there will be tremendous relaxation. And one day, one will attain. That is the reason my emphasis remains on hammering this center through breath movement. The breath arises from here and dissolves here. So this is the way you activate the center. Inhaling is normal and effortless, but exhaling needs a conscious effort. The amount of oxygen that we inhale, we inhale is not exhaled. The, and a certain amount that is left behind causes all kinds of disturbances. So by hammering means you are exhaling and thus throwing out of throwing out the breath, whatever is, is remained within. This center has a bellow move in and out below movement. It likes goes up and down. 
This movement is like contraction and expansion in the stomach. This is important. So for that, there are certain things which I have experienced and based on realization have suggested. Number one, you can use the sound who to activate this center. Once activated, the breathing naturally begins to happen through this center. You would have noticed that Muslims, they use a word at zikr, Allah who. The who is more important. Who hammers the solar plexus? If you just use this sound, there will be a constant hammering. And because of that hammering, the center gets activated and you feel full of energy, you feel interconnected to entire humanity, your relationship uh, with yourself and with others improves tremendously. The second is you can lie down on your back, place your two palms on the navel or the solar plexus center, keep your mouth slightly open, breathing will start flowing into this center. So you are lying on your back, you can keep your legs stretched or fold it to keep the ankles by the end of the back. Whichever posture appeals to you. Now place your two palms either side by side or one on one top of the other on the solar plexus. You do not have to do anything. Just keep your mouth slightly open and the breathing naturally goes to the center. This relaxes tremendously. And in that state, when this center is relaxed, excess air that is there inside within is released or dissolved and you feel tremendously relaxed. There are other techniques as well. And when combined with another technique, one gets results faster and deeper. To begin with, only this much is general and can be given to all. First, hammering the solar plexus through the sound of who, or placing your two palms on the solar plexus and keeping the mouth slightly open for breathing to happen. These are two general techniques that can be given to each and everyone. However, deeper techniques or specific will have to be designed individually for a particular seeker. This is this an awakened one does as a special instructions to a seeker when that may be necessary. So in general, anyone can practice these two techniques. It's enough for now.